Hey, I came across this puzzle that I really liked. It's called Martin Gardner's Persistence Puzzle, so I thought I'd show you guys. Uh, the puzzle is based off this concept called persistence. Persistence is defined as the number of steps required in order to multiply numbers digits together and continuing that uh, process until a single digit is reached. So for example, for 10, uh, 1 times 0 is 0, so it, and that only took one step to do, so it has a persistence of 1. 25, 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 0 is 0. Uh, that has a persistence of 2 because it took 2 steps. 39, 3 times 9 is 27, 2 times 7 is 14, 1 times 4 is 4 with a persistence of 3. And 77 has a persistence of 4 because it takes 4 steps to reach 8. Now these numbers weren't randomly chosen, these, were, uh, these numbers, uh, they're special in the case that they are the lowest number of their respective persistence. So. 39 is the lowest number of persistence 3, and 77 is the lowest number of persistence 4. So the question for this puzzle is, what is the lowest number of persistence 5? Now pause the video now if you want to solve it yourself. Uh, in a few seconds I will show the solution. So this puzzle took me, I think, uh, like two days to solve. Um, the only methods I've seen online so far are brute force type methods uh, that essentially guess starting numbers and then work backwards to uh, what the what the answer is. But this is a waste of time and only requires work. Uh, there's no cleverness involved in this strategy. Plus, if you use the guess and check method, you can never be sure that you found the lowest number. So, for example, I started with 8 and then worked to numbers that would persist to 8 and then kind of worked backwards from here and it quickly gets really complicated for one and uh, I only did this for eight you know as an example you would have to do zero through nine as well and it just gets really deep and really messy really fast so this isn't a very good method my solution does require some brute forcing but it significantly narrows down the work required to find the solution and it essentially guarantees that you'll find the lowest number. Um, uh, it just takes a little bit of work, but yeah, you can uh, make sure that what you have is the lowest number. Let's assign labels to these numbers for clarity. Uh, so for these uh, numbers that we start with, I'm gonna call these the persistence. And then the numbers following the persistence is the persisters. And then the highest persister I'm going to call this the most significant persister, or the MSP. Um, in my experience, a good way to solve puzzles is to find a pattern. Uh, my first step in trying to find a pattern was ignoring the persistent and looking at the MSP. From what I've seen, um, this is the easiest approach to solving this puzzle. Um, persisters all have a single trait in common. They can all be broken down into a factor tree consisting of only single digit numbers. So if you take the persisters uh, leading to 77, each one can be broken down into a factor tree consisting of only single digit numbers. 49 can be broken down into seven and seven. 36 is broken down into three, three, two, and two. 18 is broken down into three, three, two, and eight is broken down into two, two, and two. So this is true for all other persisters as well. Um, so to reiterate, all persisters must factor down into single digit numbers. But persistence don't necessarily follow this rule. 77 breaks down into 11 and seven, so not a single digit number. 11 isn't a single digit. Uh, 39 breaks down into 13 and three, also not a single digit. Uh, 25 though does break into five and five and 10 does break down into two and five. So the kind of interesting thing about this is even though 77 can be a persistent, uh, 77 can never be a persister. So for the answer to this puzzle, we shouldn't be focused on the persistent. We should be focused on uh, trying to find the MSP for that persistent and then deriving the persistent from the MSP. So how do we know what is the correct MSP? It makes sense that the lowest fifth persistence MSP has a persistence of four. So once we find a MSP with a persistence of four, there's a chance that it could belong to the lowest fifth persistent. Um, to find 
this MSP, we know that it must be that it must factor into only single digits, zero through nine. But factor trees only deal with primes, so we can eliminate zero, one, two, or zero, one, four, six, eight, and nine. So that only gives us two, three, five, and seven. Uh, but here, I also took a small risk and eliminated five uh, from the possibilities. Because the MSP, um, it can't have a zero in it or it'll immediately multiply to zero. If MSP does have a zero in it, we'll only have a persistence of one and we need a MSP with a persistence of four, which means that MSP cannot have uh, both a factor of two and a factor of five. Um, for example, if your MSP has a factor of uh, three twos, a three and a five, uh, your um, that will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, which will make 120. Uh, so your proposed MSP is 120. If you take the persistence of 120, that's 1 times 2 times 0, which is immediately 0, which means 120 has a persistence of 1. And uh, that won't work because we need a uh, MSP with a persistence of 4. Also, having a 5 in your MSP is dangerous because if any other digit is even, then uh, the next persister will have a zero in it, and then that following persister will be zero. So from my perspective, um, five has a small chance of being a factor for that MSP. I reduced um, the possible factors to only two, three, and seven. So my guess is that was that um, the MSP can only be represented by the factors two, three, seven. So at that time, I made a logic table to calculate the possible candidates for the MSP. So here's a logic table that I made for uh, finding the possible candidate for the MSP. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, columns for 2, 3, and 7. This is kind of like a truth table almost, um, where the 2 cycles 0 through 3 over and over and over again. So as 3, it cycles uh, from 0 to 1 so that way I can test all the possible values and then the MSP column is basically just calculating what the MSP based on these factors so for example uh, 36 uh, that's two twos and two threes so 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 times 3 uh, 3 times 3 is 9 so 4 times uh, 9 is 36 so that's how uh, the MSP is calculated. And then from there, I just calculated the persisters on my own. Um, so basically, I just wanted to kind of loop through all the lowest possible factors for this and then just kind of test each one. And then once I find an MSP that uh, has a value for the fifth persister, then I know that it is a possible candidate for being the solution uh, to finding the lowest persistent, uh, the lowest fifth persistent. Uh, so I started calculating as I went down, and then at this point, um, at uh, this part, I found my first uh, my first solution, uh, which is one two three threes and one seven, which comes to three seventy eight, and that reduces to one sixty eight, then forty eight, thirty two, six, and by working backwards, I uh, you can um, take these factors and come up with six seventy nine. Um, if it's not clear how I did this, I'll go over that in a little bit. For now, just accept that uh, from 378, I was able to step back to 679. Uh, at this point, I was in good shape because I found a number that has a fifth persistence. Since I'm looking for the lowest one, I don't need to check an MSP that is higher than 679. So at this point, I'm free to test only numbers that uh, MSPs are lower than 679. So I just keep going. And then at a certain point, I kind of give up because at 1764, I know there's no point in even testing this. And then I found another one, uh, but 686 is higher than 679, so I know anything that you derive from here is going to be higher than that. So I kept going. Um, and I started getting into factors of threes, which started generating really large numbers because you're getting into seven times seven times seven times other numbers. So I decided to go back to zero for sevens and then start going really high on twos and threes. Um, so here I'm starting to get like two to the fourth power, two to the fifth and seventh 
and um, getting these. And so I found another solution here um, where it's 2 to the 7th power times 3 and that yields 384 and that reduces down. Uh, 384 has a persistence of 4 so I know that a persistent derived from 384 will have a persistence of 5. Uh, the lowest number that I could make from 384 was 688 which is uh, it's close but it's not quite uh, lower than 679 and then uh, I kept going um, looping through uh, 0 to 7 on the 2's and then raising uh, incrementing the three the factors of three and then uh, it got to a point where the numbers were just getting too big and I wasn't finding any other, other solutions so um, in this case I've exhausted all the possibilities of the different factors of two and three while being lower than 679 that 679 is the lowest persistent uh, if you're confused on how I obtain six uh, 79 from 378 uh, that's a pretty easy answer because you want to take the prime numbers that you have um, and then make a number with these prime numbers so I have one two three threes and one seven which means you can derive a persistent with this so if you take two times three that's gonna make six and then three times three is nine so you get nine and then seven because you could also do you could also say 23,337 um, is your persistent, and that would result in 378. Or this number also has a persistence of five, but the goal is to find the lowest. So you want to group these into as few numbers as possible. So uh, two times three. So you combine two and three to get six, and three and three to get nine. And then from that point, you uh, arrange it from smallest number to biggest number, so 679 instead of uh, 976, which is also a fifth persistence, but it's obviously bigger than 679. So uh, that's how from 378 you can step backwards to 679. And uh, same concept for 384 or 688. Uh, so that was uh, my solution to the persistence problem. I uh, hope that was enjoyable at all. Uh, I know I had fun with it. Uh, happy puzzling.